Hi everyone, today's lesson is on intercepts of linear equations on a graph, um, and this page is in your notes packet, so you'll want to make sure you find it and are filling it in as you go. So you may be asking yourself, why do we need a whole lesson on intercepts when we've already learned about intercepts? Okay, You do already know a little bit about intercepts. You at least know what they are, and you know how to find them sometimes in certain situations. What we have talked about so far is we have talked about the y-intercept specifically. And you can find the y-intercept as long as the equation is written in slope-intercept form, which is that y equals mx plus b form. Because then you know that the y-intercept is just that b value. So if I hand you an equation that's written in slope-intercept form, I'm pretty confident all of you can find the y-intercept. Today, our focus is a little broader than that. Today, we want to learn how to find intercepts, both the x and the y, in any form of an equation, of a linear equation. Okay. So, what do I mean when I say an intercept? Let's back up and talk about that. An intercept is a very specific point. It is a point where a line crosses the x-axis or the y-axis. And you may be thinking, why is that so important? Well, when we use these equations, <coughs> excuse me, when we use these equations to model real life situations, those intercepts have a lot of meaning. Okay, so when we look at a real life situation, the intercepts are generally an important piece of information for us, um, and they're also pretty easy to calculate, quite honestly. So it's an easy way to find points on a graph and get them graphed. Tomorrow we're going to focus more on graphing with intercepts, and you're going to see that that's going to make things a lot easier. So take a look at these four lines, and I want to look at the places where these lines cross the x-axis. So that would be these spots here. Okay, I'm looking at these specific places, like for example, this line hits the x-axis right there. Okay, And if it's the place where it hits the x-axis, those must be the x-intercepts. So all of those points are the x-intercepts. And what I want you to notice is if you were to write the coordinates of those points, let's see if I can squeeze this in here. This, this spot right here, for example, would be 1, 2, 3, 4, so that would be negative 4, comma, 0. This point here would be negative 1, comma, 0. No, it's a little hard to read. You actually don't have to write those numbers in on your paper. Um, right here in the center is 0, 0. And this one, oh, is a little off. I'm going to call it maybe 1.2, comma, 0. But what I really want you to recognize right here is what these points have in common. If there are points on the x-axis, the y value is always 0, and that's going to be important. Okay. Now let's look at the places where these lines cross the y-axis. That would be all of these. Oh, you can ignore that. We just talked about what they all have in common. Um, those purple circles, that's where the lines cross the y-axis. And so if I were to find the coordinates of those points, let's see, this one up here would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this would be 0, 5. Again, because I'm going 0 left and right and 5 up. Okay, this coordinate would be 0, 2. Here in the center, again, that's 0, 0. And then this one would be negative, sorry, 0, comma, negative 1. Again, the 0 is coming first because to get to these coordinates, I'm going 0 along the x-axis. I'm staying right at the origin, and I'm just moving up and down. And the y number is what tells me that I'm moving up and down. So again, if you look at those y-intercepts, they all have 0 in for their x-coordinate. Oops, meant to put that up a second ago. But yep, those purple points are all called y-intercepts. So, just to summarize what we just talked about, at the x-intercept, okay, so that was the place along the x-axis where the lines were crossing, the coordinate that we always know is the y-coordinate. And I know that seems weird, but the y-coordinate is always 0. At the x-intercept, the y-coordinate is 0. And at the y-intercept, the x-coordinate is 0. And I'm going to ask you this question a gajillion times this year, okay? 
In fact, I just went and subbed for an Algebra 2 class the other day, most of whom I had last year, and I got to ask them the question again. They were so excited to hear from me again. Um, when I ask you, at the x-intercept, what do you always know? At the x-intercept, you always know y is 0. At the y-intercept, you always know x is 0. So it's always the opposite. And so what that means for us, what that means for us is you can always find an, find an intercept by plugging in 0 for the opposite variable. Okay, So we're going to plug in 0 for the opposite variable. Meaning if I'm looking for the y-intercept, I'm putting 0 in for x. If I'm looking for the x-intercept, I'm putting 0 in for y. No matter what your equation looks like, no matter what form I give it to you in. In fact, this works even if it's not a linear equation. When we get into quadratics and I ask you for the y-intercept, this is what you're going to do. Okay? So you're always plugging in 0 for the opposite variable to find an intercept. So let's try some. It says find the x and y-intercept of the equation. What you have to get through your minds is that this is two different questions, okay? You have to do these separately. There's no one way that you can find both intercepts at the same time. So I'm going to blow this up a little bit so I have a little bit of space. y equals 2x minus 3. So I'm going to start by finding the x-intercept. And at the x-intercept, I always know y is equal to 0. So I'm going to plug a 0 right here for y, and I'm going to rewrite my equation. So it says 0 equals 2x minus 3. From there I have to solve it. I'm looking, now I'm solving for x, so I would add 3 to each side. And I end up with 3 equals 2x. Divide by 2, and I get x equal to 1.5. So my x-intercept is at 1.5. Technically, I should probably write that as a coordinate. My coordinate there would be 1.5, and I'm putting it first because it's an x-coordinate, comma, 0. That's my x-intercept. For my y-intercept, I'm going to do a separate problem. At the y-intercept, I always know x is equal to 0. So if I know x is equal to 0, I'm going to plug a 0 in for x right here. And I get y equals 2 times 0 minus 3. Well, this one is easier because I just have the y by itself here and only numbers over here. So to figure out what y equals, I just need to evaluate this. Well, 2 times 0 is 0, and 0 minus 3 is negative 3. So y just equals negative 3. So my y-intercept is at negative 3. And again, I could write that as a coordinate. Now that negative 3 this time is a y-coordinate, so I'm putting it second. So it would be 0, negative 3. Okay. Let's move down. 2x plus 4y equals 32. So again, I'm going to start with my x-intercept. And at the x-intercept, what do I always know? I always know y is equal to 0. Um, and this one actually it is really easy to do even in your head. Um, and I'm probably going to have to show you in class sort of my method for doing that because um, it's hard to illustrate here on the iPad. But um, if I'm plugging a 0 in for y, really what's going to happen is this whole term is going to cancel out. So I'm going to write that out this time so that you can see it. But I want you to realize that it's okay with me if you just look at it and say, oh, that would cancel. It would look like this, 2 times x plus 4 times 0 equals 32. And if I have um, 4 times 0, then I know this is going to cancel. And so now I'm just left with 2x equals 32. Solve by dividing by 2. And I get x equals 16 for my x-intercept, which would be... 16 comma 0. Okay. My y-intercept is going to work really similarly. At the y-intercept, I always know x is equal to 0. So I'm putting a 0 right here for x. That would give me 2 times 0 plus 4y equals 32. 
Now, the 2 times 0 is going to cancel out, and so now I'm left with just 4y equals 32. Oops. Divide by 4, y equals 8, and as a coordinate, that would be 0, 0,8. Okay. So that's how you find intercepts. And notice this last one was not written in slope-intercept form, but I was still able to find the x-intercept and the y-intercept. Now let's look at this last one. y equals negative 2. And what you want to remember is that what that equation is saying is no matter what x equals, y will always equal negative 2. So I'm going to show you sort of the mathematical way to do this, but I'm hoping that um, with these weird ones, like the y equals a number, x equals a number, that you sort of start to visualize the whole picture, that you see what kind of line this is, why it is the way it is. You'll see what I'm talking about in just a second. Um, if I'm looking for the x-intercept, I know y is equal to 0. So I'm going to plug a 0 in right here, and that would give me 0 equals negative 2. Hmm, that's weird. Um, that's not possible, right? 0 can't equal negative 2. It's impossible for y to equal 0 in this problem because y always has to equal negative 2. Well, if y can never equal 0, then you can never have an x-intercept. So this equation does not have an x-intercept. And it's not 0. You can't just write 0. You have to say none. It doesn't have one. Okay, if you say zero, you're really saying that it crosses at zero. Um, and I'll show you why that one doesn't have an x-intercept in just a second. Let's look at the y-value. So for the y-intercept, I would make x a zero. Now notice I, when I go back here to plug it in, I don't have a place to plug in zero for x. Um, so what I have to think about is when x equals zero, what would y equal? Well, remember what I told you this equation says? This equation says y equals negative 2 no matter what x equals. x can be anything, and y is always negative 2. So your y-intercept is just negative 2. Okay? Again, as a coordinate, it would be 0, comma, negative 2. I'm going to move this up, and I want to talk about why that equation doesn't have an x-intercept. If I were to graph that, and I'm just going to sketch this really quickly... y equals negative 2 means that um, <coughs> all of my coordinates are going to have negative 2 as their y value. So I could pick anything I want for x. I could do 1, negative 2. I could do 4, negative 2. I could do 0, negative 2. I could do 3, negative 2. I think I made, meant to make that one a negative. Let's do negative 2, negative 2. Okay, I could keep going as long as my y value is always negative 2 because that's what this is saying. Y has to be negative 2. So if I graph those points, 1, negative 2, 4, negative 2, 0, negative 2, 3, negative 2, negative 2, negative 2, you should see that really what this is is a horizontal line. And again, I would love it if you would look at that equation and just off the top of your head say, oh, if it's y equals a number, it must just be a horizontal line. Okay, this is a horizontal line, which means that it's parallel to the x-axis. It's never going to cross the x-axis. That's why it's none. That's why it does not have an x-intercept. And the y-intercept is just at whatever the equation number was, because that's where it's going to hit the y-axis, is at negative 2. Okay, so those y equals and x equals ones are tricky. I would really focus on trying to remember what kind of line this is going to make on your graph, and then you should be able to follow up with the answer after that. Okay, um, you do have an assignment tonight. It is called Intercepts. It is a worksheet that you should have picked up in class yesterday. Um, go ahead and get started on that. You probably will need to show your work. Uh, you might have room on the paper to do it, but if not, separate sheet of paper is fine. Um, and we'll go over this in class uh, the next time I see you.